sure we weren't doing COVID. <laughs> I wish we weren't. How about that? Good morning. I sure want to welcome everyone. It's good to see so many. And we have guests, and we're glad to have you. We hope you'll take the opportunity to fill out one of our guest cards, and you can leave it in one of the boxes in the back of the blue, um, or just leave it right there on the pew. But we'd like to just give you a note of telling you we appreciate your visit, and also just a little follow-up to say, Thanks again for being with us, but thanks for being here today. You know, it's a great thing when we can get together and worship God, and it's just a tremendous, tremendous opportunity we have today to glorify Him. I'm going to read for you a passage of Scripture from the book of Psalms, and it's only one verse. It's Psalms 31, verse 1. And it will kind of put in, my, in your mind the purpose of being here today. Wonderful purposes. Notice what it says in that song. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for the praise from the upright is beautiful. Your praise to God is a beautiful thing to Him. So let's glorify God in our service today. Brother Matt will be leading us in singing our song service. Matt. Stand like Joshua, 480. Here. I guess if you're remembering a book. <laughs> In the first and last verse. <laughs> we are bound for Canaan's land.
come before you today. We are humbly aware that of your power and our need for you. That every blessing we have is a gift from you. And that we should never take these gifts for granted. We ask that you be with us today as we go about this worship. Everything said and done be pleasing to you and you be with us speak of the hour. We ask that you be with the ones who are not able to be with us because of health and that you'll be with them and their caretakers and that they'll soon be able to join us again. We ask that today especially that you be with the ones who are in the path of the storm that's coming up this way that you'll put your protecting arm around everyone and keep them all safe. Lord, there's so many things going on in this country today that are contrary to your will. And we ask that you be with us, that we can get leaders and try to change this country. For we look to you always. And these we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of the tactics that uh, are taught and instructed in terms of remembering and focusing on things is visualization. And though many of us may have not have, uh, or most of us have not visited the, uh, the places in the Bible land that we sing about and read about, uh, songs like this can help us visualize and therefore more personally understand, personally appreciate, identify with the things that happened in the uh, first century era, the things that are important in regards to Jesus' behavior and the salvation that he brought us, this song in particular uh, should help us think about and focus on uh, the experience he had in the garden uh, by himself, while his, his friends, while his support slept and while he prayed. So as uh, we've spoken many times before, pay attention to the words and understand and appreciate and focus your thoughts on that period of time in the garden as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. <coughs> we'll sing all three verses of the chorus once at the end. Oh, what wondrous love I see freely shown for you
I'll focus, I'll focus scripture this morning a little, a little different than usual. In the fact that it doesn't say a whole lot to us. It says, that is why you should examine yourselves before eating the bread and drinking the cup. It doesn't say you must drink it. If you read the verses around it, you'll see that we can sin against Christ now, bringing that to an unworthy state. If you go to Hebrews, you can read we're sinning now, crucify us in the flesh today. But I want, to, I want you to stop and think for just a minute about uh, back in Daniel, I think it's the 10th chapter, when the king, king's, uh, the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, it wasn't him, but it was his grandson, I believe, they were surrounded. And so, they were besieged and they were going to lose their kingdom and they were going to lose the battle. And so they went to the house of, uh, to the house where they had the articles of God stored, the ones that they had taken from Jerusalem out of the temple, the gold things to drink out of and the bowls. And remember, they did that in a drunken manner, very unworthy of what those things stood for. And a finger came out of nowhere and wrote on the wall. And I remember one of the things that Daniel interpreted it to say is, your days are numbered because you have done this, that you have defiled, that you have done something unworthy. Our Lord and our Savior died for us, and we should live worthy for that. But moreover, we want to take of this, of this bread and this fruit of the vine, it's not very much. But we do it all together to remember our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. The bread representing his body. And you can go into John, you can read, read where you're supposed to eat that bread and make it a part of you. If we make this bread a part of us, we're not going to eat it unworthy. If we drink this juice and make it a part of us, a part of our DNA, a part of who we are, and that Christ lives in us, we won't do it unworthy. Let us pray. Our great God and Father, we are so thankful for all that you do for us, for the many blessings that you rain down upon us each and every day, but none any greater, Father, than 2,000 some years ago when your Lord, when our Lord and our Savior, your Son, gave his life as a sacrifice that we might have forgiveness of sins. In his body, he did that, Father. He came and lived upon this earth just like we do, had all the same feelings went through all the same pains and lived a perfect life that we would be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. We thank you so much. We pray that you'd be with us as we partake of this bread, partake of his body. Help us to put his thoughts of the way he lived his life and his ideas of how he taught us that we ought to live into our lives. And help us to become a part of us and a part of what we do and who we are. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Continue our thanks for food and wine. Our God, we are so thankful for the love you give. We are told so many times in Scripture that you're cleansing us for our sins. We pray, Father, as we partake of this blood this day, this fruit of the vine, that you would cleanse us of our sins and help us to be more dedicated and to look back at that cross where he shed his blood. Look back at where they beat him. Spat on him, slapped him, 
through the crown of thorns on his head, beat him again, drove nails into his hands that blood came out of him. And then finally, throwing that spear in his side, where water and blood came out. Thank you so much. We are so sorry that that had to happen, but we pray that you'll be with us as we partake of this truth of the body. in the back if no one knows that you can drop your conscience in. There's also opportunities online for giving. If you can't figure that out, see one of us, we'll help you get it figured out. Um, God is so good. That's a great song. Just before we talk about our giving, because God has been so good to us, so gracious, so kind. It doesn't matter what we give, God always gives us more. Because of the portion that we give, God has already given to us plus. And we've been able to use what he's given us, and then we give him back just a small portion. So think about all the blessings that you have in this life. From the little bowl of cereal that you had this morning, to the cup of coffee that you have to have every morning, to the smallest detail, to the grandest thing that you have. Let's pray. Our great God and Father, we are so thankful for all the blessings that you give us, for the food that you provide for us each and every day of our lives, that we don't even have to go out into the, to the street and pick up every day. We do have to work for it, but Father, we pray that you would bless us. And we are so thankful. We're thankful for the the comfortableness that you've given us to live in, for the AC that we enjoy as we come together, not having to roll our windows down and look for fans and look for ways to cool ourselves, but you provide for everything that we have. We pray that you would help us to look into our hearts, Father, and, and gladly give to you and to those that are deserving of help those that are deserving of need, and to those that are in this country, and those that are in other countries, that are preaching your word and that are, are doing your work. Please be with us as we do this in Jesus' name. my burdens all the way up the bride and he gave me a song a wonderful song a wonderful song I now can sing in my heart Yeah. 
I wanted to take a minute and just tell you that uh, we have with us today Mr. and Ms. Rennie Frazier from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Rennie is going to be bringing us this le the lesson this morning. If you've taken the opportunity, he provided us with Bible study this morning, our Bible class this morning. I hope you'll take the time to look it up and uh, listen to that. It's on our YouTube station, but he had a lot of great things to say, and I'm sure that's exactly what he's going to share with us today. So give him your good attention, Brother Frazier. Good morning. morning. It is so wonderful to look out and to see faces that I've come to know and love through the years. And I uh, just want to say appreciate you very much. It's been a, it's been a while since uh, we've been with you. And uh, I was a little worried this morning when Brother Wayne said I had never looked so good and I had a mask on. <laughs> But uh, it is very good to be with you. We, you know how much we love Joni and Melissa, have known them over uh, 36 years, have been uh, our best friends. And uh, so knowing Joni for 36 years, I know what you're going through. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, all kidding aside, you know how we love him, and I know how you, you love them as well. We live in trying days, don't we? Times are difficult, they are stressful, we can be filled with angst, we can be filled with doubt, we can be filled with confusion, and if we're not careful, we can fall right into the hands of the devil. Because what does the devil seek to do? To steal, to kill, and to destroy, right? Uh, he seeks to, to divert our attention from where we should never take our gaze from, and that is on God. The devil, the devil seeks to blind us. And the Bible is very clear on this in very, various passages of how he seeks to blind and to distort and to deceive. And one of the passages is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. And even if our gospel is, is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord. And ourselves as your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who is shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. He wants us to lose sight of who we are, where we're going, and who God is. And so I'm hoping today, just in a very small way, that. I can remind myself, you know, preachers always preach to themselves. And I can remind myself, and perhaps I can encourage you, that we need to keep our eyes firmly fixed on God. Amen. If you turn your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter uh, 6, verses 8 and forward, there is a very familiar uh, situation, very familiar circumstance that uh, I'm sure we've read about many, many times. And uh, what's found in this, this text of Scripture, I think, is so poignant. It, it is so powerful that uh, sometimes we can just read over it if we're, if we're not careful. Beginning in verse 8 of 2 uh, Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. Now the king of Aram was warring against Israel, and he counseled with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. The man of God sent word to the king saying, of Israel, saying, Beware, do not pass this place, for the Armenians are coming down there. 
The king of Israel sent to the place about which the man of God had told him, thus he warned him, so he guarded himself there more than once or twice. Now the heart of the king of Aram was enraged over this thing, and he called his servants and said to them, Will you tell me which of us is for the king of Israel? One of his servants said, No, my lord, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel uh, the words you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and take him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. And he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. Can you see that in your mind's eye? That, that, that this city is absolutely surrounded. It is covered by enemy troops. Notice in verse 15. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, Behold, an army of horses and chariots were circling the city, and the servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered and said, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, O Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and they saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. Brethren, sometimes we only see the presence of the present circumstance. All we see is what's before us, and that can be so frightening. That can be so overwhelming. That, that, that can cause us to withdraw inside ourselves because when we encounter those situations, many times they're, they're very, very daunting. And so we are tempted to wonder in those times, where is God? Well, what, what, what is God doing? Is God present? Is, is God uh, alive? Is God working for us? Is, is God uh, on my side? And so here's this servant who sees this, this great army, and, and he is he's just completely uh, filled with fear. And he said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this? What, what is going to happen? And Elijah said, oh Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes that he might see. What, what's the most frequent command, commandment in the scriptures? What's the commandment that we see repeatedly used and re are reminded of repeatedly? You know, when we go through the do's and don'ts, maybe we think about you shouldn't lie, or you, you shouldn't steal, or you should love your enemies, or you should uh, not murder, or you should do unto others as you would have them do to you. And these are certainly biblical commandments, and these are certainly things that we need to be aware of, but surprisingly, they are not the most frequent commandment that's given us. Well, what is the most frequent commandment that is repeated throughout the scriptures? Drum roll, please. It is do not fear. Did you know that? Do not fear. And, and that's according to the, the New American Standard. Now, there may be a variation of that in the translation that you use. But do not fear is found uh, 51 times. And that doesn't include the other variations. Uh, Fear not or do not be afraid. And if you were to count all those together, it would be 107 times that this command, this commandment is given to us as the people of God. I, I find that very, very telling. Because God really knows what can control us. God really knows what, what our problem is. And the problem that we have, one of the problems that we have, the most pronounced problem, is that of fear. Again, the Bible isn't saying that there's not things that are scary. There are not things that are troublesome. There are not things that are, are, are bothersome or things that, that fill us with angst. It's not saying that. 
You know, those things are real. But what the Bible is reminding us, dear heart, is that we cannot allow those things to, to overwhelm us or to control us. We, we, we mustn't be controlled by fear. How, how can we not allow fear to be my fate? I, I think if we can remember that do not fear is often followed with an action that God is or God will undertake. And so he tells us, do not fear because this is what God is going to do. You, you don't have to fear because this is who God is. We, we, we don't have to be overwhelmed by fear because God is going to take care of something. He's in control. And so when we think of that, here's, here's just a couple of them, and you can go through and look at it. It'd be a wonderful thing to do. But in the book of Genesis, this is the first time we, we see this, this, uh, this phrase used. This is Genesis 15 in verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your, your reward will be very great. You don't have to fear because I'm your shield. You don't have to fear because I have this under control. Uh, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. But Moses said to the people, do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. In Numbers 21 and verse 34, the Lord said to Moses, do not fear him. For I have given him into your hand and all the people and his, uh, his land. And you shall uh, do to him as you did to, to Sion, the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon. Uh, in Isaiah 41, and verse 10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously, anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you by my righteous hand. In Matthew chapter 10, and verse 28, Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy uh, both soul and body in hell. But, but one of them that really strikes me, and, and, and this is one of the variations on the do not fear, do not be afraid, it is found in Matthew chapter 14. And you remember that the disciples, Jesus has sent the disciples uh, to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And this storm about 3 a.m. in the morning. You know, it's interesting that storms always come early in the morning. Then this great seismic magus comes upon the Sea of Galilee and the sea is shaking. And, and, and these men who were fishermen, by the way, this wasn't the first storm that they had been in. They'd been in many storms. But there's something about a storm that you're in is, is, is something that's unlike any other storm. And they're in this great shaking, and they see this, this spirit walking on the water, and what does Jesus say to these, these disciples, these fishermen? He says, do not be afraid. It is I. Do not be afraid. It's me. And Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said what? Come. This is a word, come. Peter gets out of the boat. Now, how many of you, you know, I live in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. The only time we walk on water is when it's 40 below. But here is Peter who gets out of the boat and begins to walk on water toward Jesus. And the, the winds are, are, are howling and the, the surge is foaming and, and he's walking on water and all of a sudden what happens? That's exactly right. He does exactly what he was told not to do. Don't be afraid. And he starts looking at everything that's going on. He starts looking around at everything that's going wrong. Raise your hand if you like Peter. Come on now, tell the truth. We are, aren't we? 
We, we, we start looking at everything that's upside down and topsy turvy and everything that's wrong. And, and we say, what are we doing out of the boat? And we begin to sing. Oh, that, that's, that's so much like me. And then Jesus saves him. He rescues him. And he says, why did you doubt? Oh, you believe. Remember why you got out of the boat. Because I said, come. Remember how you were able to walk on water. It wasn't because of you. It was, it was because of me. And, and so what do we need? We need our eyes open, don't we? And in the midst of all of what we're going through in this nation, the world, we just need to keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if we do that, we're going to be okay. So, so here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. That was an introduction. <laughs> we need to see God's presence. Remember the servant of Elisha? He goes out in the morning and he looks up and all he sees are the army, all he sees is the trouble. And he comes back and he says, Elijah, what are we going to do? And, the, and, and Elijah says, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those that are with them. Don't be afraid because those that are with us, who's with us, Elijah? Lord, open his eyes. And the Lord opens his eyes and he sees the mighty host. He sees the heavenly host. He sees the horses and, uh, and the chariots of fire. Can you imagine that? How that would just, you know what I mean? You're, you're fearful, but then you, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. Why? Because God is here. It's going to be okay, brethren, because God is here. We need to remember that. That we're not abandoned. We're not on our own. We, we don't have to figure this out. God is with us. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. Make sure that your character is free from the love of money. Be content with what you have. For he himself said, he himself has said, I will never desert you or will I ever forsake you so that we can confidently say the Lord is my helper I will not be afraid what can man do to me absolutely positively nothing why because the Lord is with me you know Jesus said to his disciples in John uh, 16 31 through 33 he said in the world you're going to have tribulation in the world, you're going to have problems. This is a sick place, isn't it? Why? Because of sin. It's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. We need to stop thinking that this is going to be okay. It's going to get worse. But Jesus said, but be of good cheer. How can I be of good cheer, Lord? He said, because I've overcome the world. That's how. Why? Because of him. Because of who he is and because of who we belong to and what he has done for us. The Apostle Paul, in the close of his life, in a Roman prison, facing death, sure death, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, he said, In my, last defense, or in my first defense, no one supported me, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against him, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that through me the proclamation might fully be accomplished that all the Gentiles might hear that I was rescued out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. What is he saying? He's saying the Lord's with me. He's saying that, that everything that God has said he's going to do. Did you know that God has no half-done projects? I have a lot of half-done projects. But he who has started a good work will complete it. He, he doesn't start something and say, whoa, oops, I forgot about that. 
He's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. God always comes through. And what do I need to do? I just need to trust him. I need to roll off on him and allow him to leave. I need my eyes open to that. I need my eyes open to God's protection. Question. Whose battle are you fighting? You know, we're good at fighting our own battles, right? We're, we're, we're good at uh, trying to, uh, to, to, to do things on our own and to figure things out. And, but let me tell you, but if, if we're fighting our own battle, if we're doing our own thing, we're going to lose every time. You know, put, put the period there. We're going to lose every time, period, full stop. But, but if we allow the Lord to fight our battle, if we allow him to be the, the center and the circumference of, of, of our lives, that, that, that what I'm going to be about is what God is about, then we'll never lose. Because the Lord has never lost a battle. He's never lost a fight. And so what we need to do, again, is, is just to trust him fully. Going back to that, that text in Exodus chapter 14, Look at verse 13. It says, But Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, which uh, you have seen today, you will see never again, forever. And notice 14. For the Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. While you, some translations say, be still. You have trouble being still? <laughs> yeah. I, I got I to gotta pick this up. I got to do this. I, I got to figure this out. I've got I've to gotta make my way. I've got to, I've got to make this, this right. No, you need to be still. Really, just be still. Be quiet. And in fact, the Bible, doesn't the Bible say this many times? Be still! And know that I am God. Quit striving. Quit trying to do things that, that are really in God's purview. Not yours and not mine. Uh, a gospel singer by the name of Yolanda Adams has a song, The Battle Belongs to the Lord. And, and here are a couple stanzas of the song. There is no pain Jesus cannot feel. There's no hurt he cannot heal. All things work according to his perfect will. No matter what you're going through, remember God is using you for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. There's no sadness Jesus cannot feel. There's no sorrow that he cannot heal. For all things work according to the master's holy will. Remember, God is only using you. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Whose battle is it? It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. What do you got to do? It's the Lord's. What do I need to see? Lord, open my eyes to see it's your battle. It's your fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Because, Lord, you will always see me through. Uh, Romans chapter, chapter 8, in verse 26 through 29, the Word of God says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps with our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray uh, as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know, and we know all things. What does all mean? All means all. That's all, all means. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. All things. Work together. It doesn't say that all things are good. 
Because all things aren't good. But all things work together for the good. You see that difference? Even in these turbulent times, in these sideways, upside down times, you mean that too? That too. Why? Because the battle is the Lord's. I need my eyes open to that. The servant of God had, a servant of Elijah had his eyes open to that. That this is the Lord's fight. He's going to take care of it. And so you don't have to be fearful. Because God will see us through. He goes on and he says, For those whom he foreknew he predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that we would be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? What does this all mean? If God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. If God is for us, if he's for me, if he's on my side, who can be against me? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. One man with God is always in the majority. Isn't that right? Remember Elijah and the prophets of Baal. 450 prophets. One man who overcame the one man with God. I guess we need to wrap this up. Okay. God will always provide. God is faithful in all that he says and all that he does. We need our eyes open that God's promises, not one of God's promises has ever fallen to the ground. Not one thing that God has said has he ever failed to do. And so what, what has he promised for you and me? He's promised that he's going to fulfill his purpose. Let me ask you a question this morning. Where are you going? No, I'm not talking about after church. No, really, where are you going? Where am I going? Isn't heaven our home? Hasn't the Lord promised that he's prepared a place for us? That's where we're going. And this, this world is our home. So we need to just stop living like this world is it for us. You know, it's so wonderful for, for Laura and I this morning. We haven't been able to come together as a church in five months in Minnesota. So just to sing and to... to uh, to be with God's people that is just a special thing. How wonderful is heaven going to be? <laughs> I mean, just think about that. It is truly going to be something that is beyond our wildest imagination. Now, what makes heaven so wonderful is it's the place where God is. And so, in closing this morning, we need our eyes open that we might see God's presence. We need to see his presence, that he has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We, we need to, to see his uh, providence, that God is in control, that he will always provide for us, and he will always protect us. And then we always need to remember, always need to see God's promise. That he's given to us these exceedingly great and precious promises. Based on who he is. And based on what he does. Thank you so much for your kind attention this morning. If there's anyone this morning that, that is in need of prayer, I need prayer. Pray for me. Uh, but this is a time where God's people can pray for each other. Or if there's someone here who needs to respond to the gospel, then come and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and, and be added to his chosen people. Be added to those people who have their eyes open, who see him and who know where they're going. May God add a blessing to
that you need to be made aware of. A uh, longtime member, Sister Eleanor Allred, passed away on July 31st, a couple of days ago, and uh, she had reached the century mark and was living in a facility in uh, St. Augustine. But there will be a service for her this Wednesday at 11 o'clock at the Anthony Cemetery, uh, the family has asked because of health conditions of some of the family that it be limited to family only. But of course, all of us see Mike and of course can express our thoughts and find out all of those other things. But that's Sister uh, Eleanor Allred. But uh, the things that Rennie talked about, certainly there will be some rejoicings because of her home that she had worked for all those years of serving God. I want to remind you that we will continue this mode of services through August the 30th. I want to remind you, it's on the board behind me, that again, the summer series, Brother John Cazetta from uh, Lake Wales with, uh, Church will be with us this uh, Wednesday. Hope you'll take advantage of that. Also, uh, the adult Bible class that we have on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Don't forget about that. Also, for those of you that are able to do so, there is a women's Bible class Mondays at, uh, Monday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, if you need more information, see Kaylee Lynch. And also, in the hallway to my left, there is a board sign up, a sign up board for the summer series preachers. If any of you would like to show hospitality, uh, to those preachers that will be coming. I think all the spaces are taken except for the last two. One of them is Brother Daryl Townsend and the other one Bill Bynum, but you can take a look at that, and I hope that will fit in. Again, guests, thank you for being here. Thank each of you for being here. I hope you have a great day. But do not want you to forget about some things that we've been praying about. We've had quite a few people coming out of surgery that are doing much better, have gone home. Please take the time to check on them. Please take the time to pray for them. Those that are going through some extensive treatments also, don't forget about praying for them. But I pray that each of us will do what we can do to assist somebody else in serving God. But again, thank you for being here. And again, Brother Frazier, we appreciate you and your wife being with us. And thanks for the good words. Brother Matt. Uh, sweet how heavenly we are closing song. Sweet how heavenly. How sweet how heavenly is the sight when those that Oh. 
Christ. Almighty God, we're so thankful for this opportunity to be in your house of worship this morning. We thank you for a powerful lesson brought to us by Brother Fisher, and we appreciate him coming and being in our midst. Father, we are mindful of those who have been sick and ill and have been returned to us, and we thank you for your blessing. We want to remember with sadness, Sister Alton.